and welcome to Here We Are, the mindful podcast for millennials, where it's all about remembering where we've been, knowing where we're going, and taking up space in the present through the art of storytelling. I'm your host, Tika, and I'll tie together the practice of presence, life lessons, and some faith and mental health nuggets too, whether sharing my own story or featuring a special guest. I hope to inspire you to take control of your story and essentially take control of your life. I hope you receive what you need from today's story. And remember to check the show notes in the description for any links that we referenced today. You ready? Let's journey. All righty. So today, you all, we have a guest. Her name is Alexandra Hopkins, and I'm really excited for her to be here. Hey, girl. Hey. How are Um, you? I'm good. How are you? Good. 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 So... Today is all about storytelling, but before we get into that, um, do you want to share with the listeners and viewers how we know each other? Yeah, so Tika and I went to high school together. Um, We lived in the same neighborhood, so I think you went, well, we got rezoned like in the middle of high school, kind of. Yeah, yeah. And so we went to two high schools together. Um, high school. Yeah, (laughs) so we met in high school. (laughs) Yes, we met in high school. So that feels like it was so long ago, which honestly, oh, yeah. was, I graduated 15 years ago this year, which is so crazy. To Isn't think that so about. crazy? It's crazy. <laughs> I'm like, I can have a teenager by now. Um, <laughs> like what? But yes. And I some people do. <laughs> some people and some people do. Shout out to y'all. Mamas. <laughs> Shout out to y'all. Um, but yes, we know each other from high school. We grew up in the same neighborhood. Mm-hmm. We'll be running around the neighborhood at each other's houses. Our mm-hmm. siblings would hang out with us too. So long standing um friendship and knowledge of each other, getting to know each other. But things have changed, of course, because oh, yeah. we've gotten older. Um, I'm sure we could both share stories about how things have changed for us personally, our families, our siblings, everything that's been going on in our life. But particularly today, um, we're going to talk about siblings. Um, I call her Zan. So y'all might hear me say Zan throughout this podcast. But um, (laughs) Zan and I can relate because we both have the dynamic of having like um, step siblings, half siblings, um, Mm -hmm. and how that makes a very unique dynamic when it comes to your family and how sometimes things are not always the way that we expect. Sometimes things don't always end the way that we expect. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I want to just hold this space for Zan to share her own story about her siblings. So if you want to share with um, listeners and viewers, how are things for you growing up in like the neighborhood we grew up in with your siblings, with your family? What was that like for you? Yeah. Um, And so I would also add to what you were saying. They're not always as we perceive them to be like everyone, even living in the same house, like everyone experiences that household differently. So um, I was a military brat. And so we moved around a lot. Um, I think I did majority of my schooling overseas, like in DOD schools. Um, And so like my siblings were like a steady, like a constant, a, a, a norm, like we moved every three years and may not stay in contact with friends or people we met in certain duty stations, but my siblings were always there. And so um, I thought that we had a real, I will say th- there were four of us. And so okay. there's like different dynamics between everyone. So me and my older sister, from like my perspective, we weren't that close, but mm-hmm. we weren't like enemies or anything. Enemies. We, we didn't yeah. dislike each other, you know, like, I was just closer to my younger sister. I felt like we were best, best, best friends. And I know people could like see it because they would ask like, are you guys twins? I wish Uh they would, they would see us interacting and they would say, I wish I had a sister. And I was like, well, too bad. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Um, Right. (laughs) Yeah. And then we had a younger brother. So me and my sisters have the same Mm -hmm. um, biological parents. And then my younger brother is from my stepdad. Okay. And I I was like seven when he was born, but I was like obsessed. Like that was my pregnancy <laughs> at seven. <laughs> um, but no, I was like obsessed with my brother. And it's just crazy because things change and you really have no idea that they're going to change or when they're going to change or how they're going to change. Yeah. But they change. So they I change. enjoyed... Um, like our childhood growing up and mm-hmm. even like where we grew up in Virginia. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I enjoyed it. I thought that we had like a, a good life. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like, like you just said, I like how you added that kind of caveat. Like even if you grew up in the same household, things are not always the way that you perceive. Everyone's experience mm-hmm. is different. And your enjoyment of that childhood of your siblings, the closeness that you felt with them, like that is real. That's your truth. And mm-hmm. I think a part of it is also being able to kind of say to others, this is my truth of what has I've experienced. Right. And things may have changed. And so oh, yeah. when you think about kind of as you guys got older, you know, we get older, we kind of have our own friends. We kind of go our separate ways. We have our own dreams. We're no longer hanging out all together at the house. We don't want to bring our sister or brother with us. You know, we mm-hmm. just kind of have those normal sibling um I won't say rivalry, but differences. How Mm -hmm. do you feel like you and your siblings changed um, over time? Okay. So I think the first kind of like hurdle, Mm -hmm. like as, as adults or like young adults was me going to the Navy and her going to college. And it's like, as a kid, I, I think like a lot has changed. Like you kind of learn more and like understand more when you become an adult. But as a kid, I was like, I'm like still, I guess, patriotic, but it kind of is like be- we- weird now and different. But I, as a kid, it was like military brat. And I was like mm-hmm. super patriotic and I wanted to mm-hmm. like, um, like pay for my freedom and like all this stuff. Yeah. So I wanted to join the Navy, but I also wanted to go to college. I wanted to be a right. chef. So I wanted to go to Johnson and Wales. I got accepted to Johnson and Wales. Yes. It was $30,000. I did not have the money. My parents did not have the money. <laughs> so I joined the Navy. Uh-huh. And so I was like down in Norfolk on a ship. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And my sister got accepted to a fairly like prestigious um, uh-huh. HBCU in the area. Uh-huh. And I would like, I had money because I was in the military, wasn't that much money, and it was more money than we were expecting to have at 18, 19. So I would like take her shopping and stuff and we would hang out Mm -hmm. and she was having her fun at school and I was having my fun. But I remember when we dropped her off at school, I was like extremely envious that she was going to college and I was in the Mm -hmm. Navy. Mm -hmm. But it was like my little sister, like how, yeah, like you're going to support her. And so that's what I did. Like I supported her, you know? Um, and so, like I said, if she needed things, I would take her places. She was in like ROTC. So we would go to the commissary and the exchange. And like, we Mm -hmm. kind of had like that connection because she was planning to join the military after she graduated college. Okay. Um, and then I'm like trying to think (laughs) how everything happened. So in my opinion, it was like, I was seeing something that I really wanted and I wasn't getting, but I always knew like w- my time was going to come. If this was supposed to be something that I was also, also supposed to have, it would come. Um, perspective. Yeah. And so eventually some things fell through for her and she was not able to continue with ROTC. So then she was not able to um, have her loans paid off by joining the military. And so then she could no longer afford to be at her university. Yeah. Right. So she um, moved back home mm-hmm. and she went to, what's the local, I can't remember the um, community college. I always want to say TCC, but that's because I'm down Germana. here. <laughs> Germana. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I was going to say Mary Washington, but no, Germana. <laughs> yeah. So she went to Germana and okay. she was like doing well. She was working. Yeah. Um, yeah. She was paying for her own education. It was like, you are a yeah, bad ass. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that's good, you know? Yeah. Um, and then at the same time, um, I got out of the Navy and I had okay. my um, GI Bill. So I could go to any school I wanted to that I could get into. Paid and off. they would most likely pay for everything, right? So I applied to the University of Miami and I was so excited. Like, I think when I got my acceptance letter to the University of Miami, I remember crying and like knowing, oh, my life is going to go right. Yeah, because that was your time. Yeah. And 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 it's like oftentimes education is pushed as like the only way to success. Mm, Granted, mm -hmm. I'm sure we know that's not the case anymore. Yeah. But at the time, that's what I was still feeling. Like I didn't have an education. I just had my military experience and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted 
I wanted one, a college experience and I wanted my, a degree. Okay. Um, and so I got into the university of Miami at the same time, around the same time. Um, well, when I was in college is when my mom and my stepdad got divorced. So we moved out of our neighborhood. Okay. Yeah. So we moved out of our neighborhood. I was in college. So I was in Miami. They moved out and they moved into like a, a small two bedroom apartment, which is very different from, from the, the house we that we live in. Right. Um, and so I think it was like a huge shock for her that she was there. Oh, she went with your mom. Yeah. She was living with my mom. Right. Okay. And, and attending okay. school and working. Um, and so for my mom, it was like, she's doing what she can to help her. She can't pay for her education, but she can give you like a roof over her head. And so I was in college and I was enjoying myself. And like they say, (laughs) they say hindsight is 2020, but, and, and it is because like, I'll look back and I'll notice like small little things that why I remember one statement in particular that she said to me, like, I made a really good friend in college. And she was like, you better not think she's, or she better not be like trying to replace me. And I just like laughed it off. Like I like, and and the the thing is that, (laughs) right. You're my sister. Like, what are you talking? And the crazy thing is when I got to college, I remember having conversations with these girls because we became close friends and, um, they would be like best friend, best friend, best friend. I was like, I don't have best friends. I have sisters. So I don't need best friends. Like, (laughs) and like how cocky am I? Or it's almost like rude. To honestly say that, because like, I'm privileged to have a a sister that I'm so close with, you know? And so I like, I mean, I have close friends, but I don't have best Mm -hmm. friends because I have a sister. Mm -hmm. Like my sister is my best friend. Right. And so, and so even when, when my sister made this statement, like, oh, she better not be trying to replace me. I didn't give that like reassurance. Like it could, that that's not possible because in my head, I didn't think that it was like a real doubt of hers. You know, like I thought it was just like, she just being crazy. You know, yeah, like yeah, she just being funny. Still, yeah. And so I went to college in 2012, um fall of 2012. Mm-hmm. I think my mom moved into like that new apartment in 2013. Okay. And winter of 2014, I came home for winter break and mm-hmm. I still want to be a lawyer, but I don't know if that's something that's that I'm going to pursue, but I had just purchased an LSAT study book and I was studying for the LSAT because, excuse me, in like a year I would be um, graduating college and Mm -hmm. I would want to go to law school. So um, I remember (laughs) I had gone to Otani (laughs) one night. Oh, the restaurant. Don't tell me you've never been to Otani. I have, but I was like, I had to remember. I was like, wait, if you talk about a restaurant or is this yes. like some sort of like store? <laughs> hibachi. Like a person? <laughs> okay. Hibachi. Yes. So Otani. I had gone to Hibachi. I had gone to Otani that night. Anyway. Yes. Everyone goes there for prom. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, okay. so I remember the night like so vividly. I went to Otani with a couple of friends. I was like mm-hmm. stuffed because I was, and like you bring a, a to go box, but you still eat as much of as course. you can, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I get home like to my mom's new place. And Mm -hmm. I was like studying and my sister had just come back from like, I want to say she went to like a Bible study or something like that Mm -hmm. with a friend. And so there were two bedrooms. I was sleeping on the couch. My brother was home from college. He was like sleeping on the couch or the floor during winter Mm break, um, Mm -hmm. had her, her room (laughs) Mm -hmm. and my mom had the other room. And so um, I remember she went into her room and my mom told us like, I need the kitchen clean, the trash taken out and the dog walked or something like that. I mean, you grow in a house, grow up in a house full of siblings, you know, it's like nose goes like I'm calling right. the chore that I want. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yes. I'm not cleaning the kitchen. <laughs> right. So that was the I remember, <laughs> I remember like me and my brother, like hurry up and called like whichever one we wanted. Cause we didn't, we didn't want to clean the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember my sister saying, like, I'm not cleaning the kitchen. And we're like, why? Like, why won't you just clean the kitchen? Like, it's not that big a deal. And for us, it was like, you actually live here. Like, we're just home for a break for sure. right now. Yeah. And you don't pay rent. You know what I mean? Like, mom doesn't make you pay rent. Mom doesn't make you pay utilities. You just live here for free. Like, why can't you clean the dishes? Yeah. And so I remember, oh, I need to add, our biological father, we do not have a relationship with. Okay. Um she was 
I was probably like kindergarten, first grade when my parents got divorced. Mm -hmm. And so she's like two and a half years younger than me. So she was like, maybe three, three. Yeah. Like she was young and she doesn't really remember. I I would assume she does not remember the stuff that he had done to my mom and like put us through. So I'll give like one little example. I remember he took me and my sisters to, and this is just me remembering like from being a kid, a pool party that he said was for his job, but he took us with another woman. And and I remember thinking back as an adult, I'm like, that lady was probably so petrified because I remember going under the water and holding my hands up to count like how long I could stay under the water. And I inhaled under the water and was like, just like hurling up water, like coughing, coughing. And she like snatched me out of the pool. Like, could you imagine being a mistress? Exactly. And someone's child Uh, to drown. Your daughter Um, drowned. I happen to be there. Who are you? Well, who are you? Why were you there? there? (laughs) Exactly. Um, And so that like, there are more stories, but I don't believe she remembers them. And so yeah. um, somewhere in this time frame, she had started to build a relationship with him. Okay. And during this like college time. Right. This, this college okay. time frame. Right. And so in my opinion, he is, he can be very manipulative mm. and use people to do and, and like get what he wants. And so mm. another example, he, he would send child support, but it would be eight dollars. Me, Sorry. me, for two children, for three, three really? children, right? So I can't get three kids a happy meal. Wait a minute. Well, and my thing is, we would get twenty dollars every week for lunch. So what is your eight dollars doing? It's not. And even so he for has week. no, not yeah. for one child, not for one child. And so yeah. he he has said that he was just trying to get our and my mom's attention by sending eight dollars and so you're affecting your children to get someone's attention okay odd (laughs) so so just to give you like kind of like how how he like operates yes and so she had started to build a relationship with him and you could tell she really wanted something that she thought she was really missing and so um like back to that night, um, I went into the, her room to ask her, like, why don't you just, why don't you just do the dishes? Like, I don't understand. And I thought I was the closest one to her. That was my best friend. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to have a conversation with her. And you and were she, hers, the way she made it seem. You were hers. That's what I thought. That's what I believed. Other. Right. And so um, she pulled out her phone and she started recording me. Huh? I'm like, that's what I said. I'm like, this is weird. And so I said, and I, at the time I still called him dad or daddy, but now I call him by his first name. Um, so I said, um, I know you're recording to show daddy, like, like, can you stop? And so I, I reached to cover the phone. Okay. So her bed was like an Ikea bed, like closer Mm -hmm. to the floor. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm almost like, I'm standing up. I'm not sitting down. I'm standing up. So I'm like over her kind of, but not like to be aggressive, but just because I did not sit down when I came in the room, she kicks me in the stomach. So this escalates very quickly because when I say I've never, how did it go from, I just wanted to figure out why you don't want to clean the kitchen to now recording and and kicking in the stomach. Right. Okay. But I will, I will, I'll, I will be labeled the aggressor because they'll say that me covering the phone was me lunging at her. Okay. 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 So she kicks me in the stomach and this is after I tried to cover the phone. So, I mean, I'm not going to argue. You didn't have, there was no consent for you to be recorded. So you should be allowed to stop it, but okay. Right. So she kicks me in the stomach and, and like I said, I've never fought my siblings before ever. So this is not something that like, Oh, we used to do this as kids and now we're getting back to it. Like, no, this is we didn't hit. So, um, and there was an all out fight. Like we fought each other and for the first part of it. Oh, and that's another thing. So when I, so in between me being in the military and going to school, I worked for the government. And during that time I gained weight. So I was probably like one fifty ish 
Mm -hmm. And then when I got to school, I was working with athletics and doing like tours for like prospective um, football recruits and stuff like that. So I was like walking, walking. I had got down to 118. Wow. And I remember, I don't know if I'm, I mean, like it was exciting because I was looking cute in Miami, but um, Miami. (laughs) Exactly. So, but I will also say, I remember telling them, my mom and my sister, like yeah. when I was home, I feel so small that I couldn't defend myself if I had to. I remember telling mm. them this. Mm-hmm. And so I thought it was very ironic that now we get in a fight. Yeah. Um, and so there was a fight for the first half of it. I was just like, like, get off That's of me, happening. you know, yeah. like get off of me. I wasn't really trying to fight her. Then it's like, okay, well now I'm going to have to defend myself, but she was yeah. bigger than me and not, yeah. not like to throw shade or anything, but she was bigger than me. I had lost a lot of weight. Um, Mm -hmm. and so it got to a point where I'm like laying, laying on the floor and she's straddled on top of me, like banging my head into the ground. What? Yes. And she knows I am not the person to let that go. There was no way she was just going to sleep peacefully that night because we've never gotten to that point. And so I don't really know why did it escalate that I don't to that level of like hostility it's like why are we this violent why are we this so, aggressive right so I think what I have taken away is like the smallest um like show of jealousy I'm done I'm out I'm gone okay so what would you say the difference between jealousy and envy are yeah so I think that envy is more like you like you want something that someone else has, but you're willing to work for it yourself. Whereas jealousy is like, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take them out so that they don't have it for themselves. Like if you, if I can't have it, nobody can. And that's Mm. how I think of jealousy Mm -hmm. and envy is like, yes, it's one of the deadly sins, but it's like people are envious of a lot of things. And I don't think that they're going to attack people or go out of their way. So, so someone else can't have it because they're envious. At least that's how I think of it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, um, that night, Mm -hmm. um, so I, we kind of left off in the fight. So she was like banging my head on the floor Mm -hmm. and at that, and my mom had come in the room, like, stop it, like screaming, please stop, please stop. And it wasn't stopping. Um, and so after she had like straddled me, she jumped up, ran out of the apartment and we were on the first floor. So she just ran straight out of the apartment she goes to other doors and starts banging on doors saying that I'm trying to kill her. So it, it's like escalating and then it's escalating more and more this and more to another level uh, that I couldn't, could have never imagined ever. I could have never imagined it in a million years. So she calls the people call the police. There's a lady at my, there's a lady at my door saying that someone's trying to kill her. So the police yeah. come out yeah. and what I know now is don't let the police in because the police are going to make up their story. If you need the police, let the police in. <laughs> but <laughs> the situation, like if I could go back, me and my mom said we wouldn't let the police in because yeah. go talk to the person that thinks they're going to get killed. Don't come talk to us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so the police officer determined that I was the aggressor and wow. I was arrested that night. And Yes. And I was taken to Rappahannock Regional Jail. So while I'm on, so while I'm on winter break from college studying for my LSAT and it's like embarrassing, like, cause I'm thinking like, this will all be cleared up. Like I'll talk to my sister tomorrow. This will all be cleared up as angry as I am. I'm like bawling, crying my eyes out. I'm still, I'm going to talk to her tomorrow. It'll all be fine. You're still open to reconcile. You're still thinking about, Hey, this is my best friend. This is my sister. We'll figure this out. But you're literally in jail. Okay. Yeah. And I remember even asking, because it's like, I never thought I would be in jail. Mm -hmm. I remember asking um, the police officer, like, should I change my bra so that I don't have underwire on? It was like, this is like, I, I'm not doing this. Right. Like this is, Mm -hmm. she was like, no, you'll be out. It's just, we're just going to book you and you'll be right out. And so I'm like, okay, we drive in a Rappahannock regional jail, talk to the magistrate. We're doing fingerprints. We're doing, um, like the, the, the photos. Things, the shots, yeah. yeah. And then they put me in a jail cell. <laughs> and so I'm like, 
okay, this is not, again, not panning out the way I'm thinking. So mm-hmm. I call my mom, I call my mom. She's like trying to get a bail bond and all this stuff. So we eventually um, get, I get out and this is on mm-hmm. December 30th. So we get out December 31st and we go to, what is it like hallelujah night or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, to, and oh, so, watch night. That's what it's called. Like, or watch, watch whatever it watch is. Night. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> to bring in the new year. So I'm like, okay. And I texted her. I'm like, but there's a protective order. So I had to wait like three days or something like that. There was like an immediate protective order put in place. So I had to wait like okay. three days. And I texted her. I'm like, do you want to sit down and talk? She was like, there's mm-hmm. nothing to talk about. So it's like, this is what she wanted. Zan, this is over the kitchen. Is this that's what I'm this not this not this is, but this is not over the kitchen. But I feel like we know this is deeper, but it's kind of like how did cleaning the kitchen become the catalyst to like mm-hmm. all of this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing to talk about. I I I, I disagree. So I'm like, okay. okay, so I I have to call a lawyer. Because if she's not gonna drop charges, I have to fight my case. Yeah. Oh gosh. And she she will she will say probably to this day that she could not drop the charges that the prosecutor pro, pre, press charges. But if you don't show up, if you tell them you don't want to press charges, that's right. what they're gonna they, do. They won't so, do it. Come on. So hire an attorney. The attorney says, and I'm I'm sure he deals with these domestic violence cases mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. where people do not want to get their family members in trouble. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, Do you want to be free? And I said, Yes. Yeah. And he said, so then you need to do what I'm telling you to do. And I said, okay. He said, go down to the magistrate or I don't remember exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. Write out everything that happened because the point where she straddled you and started banging your head on the floor, she probably could have said self-defense up until then. But then when she gained control and continued fighting, that's when she kind of like muddied the water. Right. So now I can press charges back on her. So we both have the same charges. I go back to school. When I say I go back to school and I'm a completely different person, I never told one soul at school what happened. Not one soul. Of course. I mean, you said I didn't even know how to get. How do we bring that and up? You don't even, that's what I'm saying. You don't even know how to like start the story. I never told anyone. And so mm-hmm. um, we're, I'm like, you know, like I have this case. And so um, probably that summer, so summer 2015, Okay. Um, I got a job with my university mm-hmm. and it was working with kids. And so they do a b- background check and my case is open because. <laughs> Wait, by the time you get to the summer, have y'all went to court or anything? Like had the lawyer said anything was no. happening? Okay, no, so but she can. Conti- like- no. Yeah. It's still just open and we're waiting okay. for a court date. Okay. And she continued to like. I don't know what the word is like re up the restraining order, even though I was living in another state and she knew I was living in another state. Typically you can't get a restraining order if someone lives in another state. Right. So, um, that summer, so they did the background check. They came and asked me, you don't have to tell us what happened, but if you would like to share, we're like, we're open to listening. And so I told Mm -hmm. them what happened and sounds like sibling jealousy. And like, Mm -hmm. it wasn't like me going to find someone and assault them. Right. And so they allowed me to have the job and, oh, good. um, okay. yeah, so it, it's just like this weight. Um, and, and so I remember getting a call from my attorney during that summer and he said, um, she just filed a motion to sue you for $10,000. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Each step this story takes is blowing my mm-hmm. mind. Now, what is mm-hmm. the $10,000 for? So the night that she a- attacked me, because I'm going to say she attacked me, because I don't think that this That's not warrants everything that happened. Yeah. Um, and so that night, our father had, well, he had purchased her a guitar long before then. Mm-hmm. But because I couldn't get my hands <clears throat> on her, I broke her guitar. I remember okay. like stomping on that guitar so hard. Okay. And she says that guitar was worth $10,000. At least that's what I was told. I don't know. And so I I remember telling my attorney, like, I really think that there needs to be a psych eval. Can you ask them for a psych eval? Like, I'm being serious. There needs to be a psych eval. And he's like, no, we can't just request a psych eval. And I'm like, there's something more going on. There's something going on. And he's like, we can't request a psych eval. And so I remember, 
and typically so that like your lawyer has a fiduciary duty, like they have your mm-hmm. best interest at heart, yes. um, but they should be contacting you before making a decision for me. I remember he called me that day and he said, um, typically I would have um, like spoken to Get you first, uh-huh. right? But this was so preposterous that I told them that if they wanted to pursue this, I would get that her attorney disbarred and your sister would be under the jail <laughs> by the oh. time this case was over. Come on, lawyer. I was like, lawyer. that's, I was like, I that's the that's kind right. of lawyer I need, okay? <laughs> Do, what's your retainer? <laughs> I need you I'm in my like, corner at all times. I'm like, thank God. Somebody is Don't like, try us. Right. Somebody wow. is like helping me. Like somebody yeah. is finally seeing yeah. like how over the top this is. Hold on. I have um, a quick question. Yeah. What is your mom's like, how is she responding to all of this? Cause I could imagine that she's probably looking at her daughters like what the heck is going on? Right. Um, even now it like tears her apart, but it's like, what can you do? You can't control other people. You can't make them like, you can't, you can't control them. Oh my gosh. Okay. Cause I was thinking about that. Like, you know how sometimes parents, they have these, these goals and dreams for their children mm -hmm. or, you know, like you said, your mom, Mm -hmm. she's trying her best to just like put a roof over her head, Mm -hmm. support her as she's in community college, you know, support you and your brothers. Y'all are in school. Mm -hmm. Like all of y'all are doing what they call the successful path, trying to be successful, Mm -hmm. good citizens. And then this happens. So it's like, Mm -hmm. it's it's like a mind, it's a mind, just mind blown. Um, Okay. So your, your lawyer's like, don't play us. We're not, (laughs) if you pursue this, I'll make sure that all of y'all pay the consequences. Right. We're going in. Um, And so eventually, I think around August, Mm -hmm. um, we had our, we finally had our court date. Mm-hmm. And because we both had charges, there was mm-hmm. nothing she she couldn't fight. You know what I mean? So she right. I, in court that day, she agreed tr- to drop charges. I agreed to drop charges. Okay. But from that day moving forward, n- I'm never speaking to you again. I could imagine to think that someone that close to you could intentionally try to ruin your life. Mm. When I say it was just, I, I, even now, like repeating it, it's like, that's not true. Like, that's not real. That didn't Surreal. happen. And it happened. Yeah. So, so since then, um, so I graduated college and, and mm-hmm. it actually has caused a huge rift, even in my extended family, because mm-hmm. one of my mom's sisters, so my mom is, um, one of six kids. And okay. so she has two other sisters and one of her sisters would say that I was her twin because we were both Mm -hmm. the middle girl, you know? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. middle child syndrome and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. And like, we like to get cute and stuff like that. So we were very similar Mm -hmm. when this happened, that aunt never told my, so she allowed my sister to come live with her because my mom said, you're not allowed in this house anymore. She allowed my sister to come, come live with her. Mm-hmm. And then she never said, I think that you should go try to mend things with your, your sister and your mom. She never said that. What she did was took my sister in as her own daughter, so to speak. And this aunt does not have children. And so she's like taking my sister in and kind of like acts like a mother and grandmother. Yeah. And so this has caused a rift between my mom and her sister now. And so, the, and, wow. and. And I say that I often feel like I'm to blame because my, I think, I think maybe you can attest to this, that I think growing up, I was always like super assertive, like don't, Mm -hmm. I think I give off the like, don't mess with her. Mm -hmm. Um, And even my sister, her, her friends would always be like, I wish I had a big sister like Mm Zan. I remember this one girl called my sister Bojangles. And she worked at the giant on <laughs> down from our neighborhood. Okay. And I remember I parked next to her car and waited until she came off her shift. And I said, what does Bojangles mean if you call someone Bojangles? Okay. And I got, and I got, cause it's a small place where we're from. So yes. I got word that there was a, a staff meeting that, <laughs> 
Um, like people needed to be walked to their cars now because there was like safety stuff going. When I say I protected my sister, don't yeah. you ever, ever, ever think you can mess with my sister. Yeah. So I think like I gave that off all the time. Right. And so but when this happened your family and yourself. Right. But when this happened, people pulled from those instances. And those experiences that they Tried saw of me character. Yeah. and said, this is, this is how she is. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I had an incident in college where this girl attacked me at a bar. She was drunk. I think she was like on something. We had to go to court. She was on something like on, but what is going you, on? <laughs> Tika, you know, what's crazy <laughs> the summer or the, the fall before. Okay. The year before I went to college is when, uh-huh. do you remember that story about the man on bath salt and he ate someone's face like on the causeway in yeah. Miami? Yeah. Yeah. So I think she was on something and like. like bath salts. Ooh, yeah. Girl. She was on something. That was a time. Um, and so, <laughs> <laughs> so my sister also used that as an example. Like she always gets in these um, like fights, I guess. But it's like, I didn't fight this girl. She she like attacked me in, in the, and it was like concluded in the. <laughs> The that case, the that's, she that's what happened you. right right and so nothing ever really came of that but um and there was only one way charges no charges were against me in that case mm-hmm. so um mm-hmm. yeah so then I graduated college like I said there was a mm-hmm. huge rift in our family mm-hmm. um so some family members were not invited to my college graduation and that caused oh, problems and then So then I moved back to Virginia. I got a job with a really huge company. Mm -hmm. And um, so I moved back to Virginia. I then got a job, like an offer. They moved me back to Miami. Mm -hmm. And my mom got sick for a while. She's fine. Mm -hmm. She got sick for a while and I wanted to be closer to my mom. So I moved to um, Hampton Roads area. Okay. And at the time, my sister was living in Hampton Roads. Same exact city. Same exact city. With her boyfriend and her child. Okay. Mind you, she named her child after me. <laughs> huh? Like after this incident? So his first name. Oh, this is after the incident. Years after the incident. When she we have not spoken for years. You? His middle name is, so my name is Alexandra. His middle name is Alexander. That is interesting. And I've and I've spoken to her son's father about it, and he confirmed mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that yes, he's like, oh, I have a family member with the same name, but it is like it's like to pay homage to both of y'all, right? Because if she had anything against you, she probably wouldn't be like, no, I know you have a family member of yeah, my name, but right. I'm not even going to give my <laughs> yeah. If it was right. really a whole like, I can't stand her. Mm-hmm. We don't have anything to talk about it, but. Right. It's, I mean, but right, all, exactly. I'm making assumptions here, but that is kind of crazy. No, yeah. So I think most you know, people, because you know, uh-huh. teachers even do that. They're like, oh, I had a yeah. really bad student. I would never name my child that. Yeah. <laughs> it's your sister's name that you said tried to kill you and you tried to sue for $10,000 and ruin her life and you named your son after her. Okay. So, <laughs> so this is, this is, this is taking so many twists and turns. I'm honestly experiencing a flash <laughs> on this end. <laughs> But I'll be, I'll be okay. I'll be fine. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm fine. I feel like it's like 10 years later. It is. So, okay. So I moved to Hampton Roads. We're living in the same city, probably okay. five minutes from each other. Um, And I remember my mom saying, like, I'm so glad you're going to be down there. You'll be able to help her if she needs help. And I got so mad at that statement because it's like, like I told you before, I feel like I'm like the victim, like these things happen to me and people right. are still asking me to be the bigger person to be the, big you know sister, what I mean? Like, yeah, like you're person, still asking to me to be the, role. she won't apologize. Mm-hmm. She won't have a conversation. And the thing is I've sent her snail mail, like written a letter asking like, why did these things happen? Like I really yeah. needed answers for years. Yeah. I needed answers, yeah. um, text calls, all this stuff. And so the year that I moved back to Virginia, I remember agreeing to have a call with her. Mm-hmm. So we were talking, it was just me and her. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I still knew her enough to, that I could tell that it was like, she was trying to be 
um, like brave, I guess. And, yeah. and, and like stand up for herself. But she, I think we both knew that there was nothing she could say that could justify the things that she had done. And really what she just needed to say was, I'm really, really sorry. And mm-hmm. I know that sorry won't do anything, but I'm willing to like do I what it takes. To, there's That's all you can do. Yeah. Um, the charges and, were dropped. She's no longer suing, but it's still the emotional damage. Oh yeah. Right. Oh yeah. And then like you said, it, the ripple effect, this has affected now our extended family. Oh yeah. Sorry mm-hmm. is not necessarily going to fix everything. We mm-hmm. understand the sentiment of apologies and we understand, Hey, we can't go back and change the past, but wow. The mm-hmm. brevity of every, it's like, right. What is sorry really going to do? Wow. Right. Okay. Exactly. And so in that phone call, um, she was saying how like, I really wanted to be like you, but I don't think there's any anything wrong with a little sister wanting to be like their big sister. And I said, I'm not, I didn't say that there was either. There's not, but I should not be the focal point. Right. And it shouldn't be so much so that it leads to where we are today. And so I'm just not good at always waiting for people to get their entire statements out. And so I, was like cutting her off kind of, and I could tell it was frustrating her. And so she, I I said, I don't want to have this conversation. And she's like, no, 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 let me talk. So I'm like, okay, like, I I just don't care to have this conversation. I don't think it's leading anywhere. And so she, um, wait, do you mind cursing or no? Girl, go ahead. Okay. (laughs) So she's like, you're a jailbird and a dumb bitch jailbird and (laughs) hangs up the phone. I can't make this stuff up. I'm not joking. Wait. So I'm like, I'm like a jailbird. I've only been in jail when you sent me to jail. Like, what are you talking about? Was it about? even for a full 24 hours? No. no. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. And, and this then, is because you were like, I don't want to have this conversation. Yeah, I don't want to have this it's conversation. Not it's not, right. And her response mm-hmm. was to go there. Jailbird. Okay. Maybe you could title the, (laughs) maybe you could make the title Jailbird. (laughs) So, (laughs) so then, um. No, I'm not going to make from Sister (laughs) to Jailbird. Please. (laughs) (laughs) That would be good. (laughs) And then, so, okay, fast forward, because there was a few years where it was just like, oh, that's what I, okay. So, um, I worked for a very big company that did right. like grocery delivery and stuff right. like that in the area, covered it for all of Hampton Roads. Um, and I knew that my sister financially was not doing well. Okay. Very much so not doing well. Okay. And I had just bought a house and I was like doing well. And so I yeah. still wanted to help her, but I didn't want her to get yeah. too close to me. So yeah. I texted her boyfriend and I said, we're clearing out our grocery warehouse. We're relocating. Mm -hmm. I'm going to package groceries and give them to you guys. When I say I filled his car, filled the front, the back, the trunk with groceries. Wow. So, okay. Because I feel like, okay, this is now the therapist and me popping out. But when it comes to the role, family dynamics and the roles that we have, it is so hard sometimes to let go of those roles. And I'm hearing like your role as not only like the middle sister, but also like the older sister who was very much like protective and defensive Mm -hmm. over her siblings and even herself. It is not easy to say, even though you hurt me to a, a, an end that I can't even explain. I still have love for you because that's mm-hmm. it's like you know how some people say like you can leave someone, but you don't just like end the love that you mm-hmm. have for them that day mm-hmm. that you leave them. It's like I still have love for you. I still want mm-hmm. the best for you and your child and mm-hmm. your man. Mm-hmm. That is okay. And okay, and that even it. contradicts this character flaw. That, I mean, this character um, assassination that they were trying to do before. That's what I'm saying. And wow. even when I had to press press counter charges on her, I was like bawling my eyes out. Like I don't want I don't want this to happen for her. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But your lawyer I don't want to like, do this. Yeah. And that, yeah, like this is what you have to do. And so I texted her boyfriend and I said, "You can come get groceries. Do not let her come here." Mm-hmm. Cuz I knew they were struggling, but it was like like, who am I to have, like, 
I'm like a single woman, just built a house, like bought a house, all this stuff. And like my sister has a boyfriend and a kid and they're struggling. And I'm in the same city and I'm throwing, I'm throwing like brand new groceries away. Yeah. So filled the whole car. Just go take it. It's fine. Yeah. I can guarantee you I was not supposed to do that. Like through my employer. Yeah. So that happened. And, um, randomly I would get like a text or a phone call from her boyfriend and then mm-hmm. it got would kind of get weird. Cause then I would get like a text or a phone call and it would say his name. Mm-hmm. And then when it hung up, it would say her name. I don't know how that happened. So mm-hmm. I, like, and I think they were like doing like a three way call or something and she could listen or oh. something like that. And so maybe, yeah. But when he, when, it, when they called, it would be him. And so um, he would ask like, Hey, do you want to go get some, some breakfast with us? We're about to go out to breakfast. And I'm like, there are so many conversations that need to be had before, before we go out and get like, breakfast right. together. And so I said, no. And that, that maybe happened like two or three times. Okay. And then. Boundary. Right. And then um, uh, what happened? The pandemic happened. So oh, I yeah. moved oh, here in like 2019 ish. Mm-hmm. And then in 2020 is when I started IVF to become a single mom by choice. And mm-hmm. COVID happened and all that stuff. Oh, and um, you you start to like build your quarantine bubble. Like we know these right. people are just going to be around these people, blah, blah, blah. And so my mom had chosen me to be in her quarantine bubble because all I was doing was going to work and coming home. I was not hanging out with anyone, nothing. And I'm assuming my sister was doing more. She had a son that probably went to daycare and a boyfriend that went to work. And so, right, exactly. So she just said she would, it would just be me and her. And we were both single living in our own homes. Like, Mm -hmm. plus you said (laughs) your mom was coming, getting over an illness. She was still right. 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 Exactly. To be at risk. Yeah. Right. And so, I did not announce my pregnancy. I got pregnant in like July. Mm -hmm. I did not announce my pregnancy until March, I think, of Mm -hmm. the next year. And I was due in April. And and it was pandemic. It was COVID. Like, you don't see anyone. I remember that. I remember you said like, (laughs) I think you said like you're starting your maternity leave. And I said, for who? What? what?" (laughs) Yeah. What is happening? (laughs) And and I remember I did like a little, um, like a boomerang on my mm. story because I had just mm-hmm. bought a new car and I was I was like this is my mom car and every and I like kind of showed my belly in the boomerang I'm like everyone's more excited about my belly than my car <laughs> well duh ma'am <laughs> we can see a car any day <laughs> who knew you were pregnant yeah no one knew I was pregnant but the funny thing is so I announced it in March like mm-hmm. everyone knew in March and you know people talk and this is how I know people mm-hmm. talk Mm-hmm. because then my mom get a, gets a call from my sister that says, Zan hasn't been quarantining. I just want you to be safe. Just know that, just know that she hasn't been quarantining. And my mom's like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? And so she's like, yeah, she hasn't been quarantining. That's all I, that's all I can say. That's all I can say. She hasn't been quarantining. Oh, trying to say, oh, she's pregnant because she's been hanging out with right. other people. My- Meanwhile, my belly is the size of a beach ball. So what she heard was I was pregnant, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I remember, um, so that was like one day. And then like the next day she calls back again and it was a FaceTime. So she FaceTimes her and my mom doesn't answer because we're together. And she's like, this is just going to cause drama. And so then she FaceTimes again. So I answer, I'm like, what's up? And she's like, um, no one cares about you. No one cares about you. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and again, people have to be talking about me. I have to be a topic of conversation somewhere where we're from, because then she says, you're a dirty hoe. You're a dirty hoe. And I'm like, how am I a dirty hoe? She's like, you use donor sperm off the internet. So it's like in one second, she wants to reconcile and she hopes that I come back and we can like mend this relationship. And then in the next breath, I'm a jailbird and a dumb bitch and a dirty hoe. And it's and like, this is unprovoked. I'm assuming this is this is this this is simply because I answered the phone and I said, what else do you need to tell her about me? Like, how are you even telling anyone anything about me? We do not speak. Yeah. And so it's it's just like for me, it's like I would love to have the relationship back, but it's hot and cold. Like one second you're 
supposedly willing to have mm-hmm. this conversation and mend things. And then the next second, you're one digging up information about me, either asking someone or someone's reporting back to you or something about me. Yeah. And you're like, use it like weaponizing it. Yeah. And so, jeez. So for me, it's like we're done. Yeah. We're done. There's no going back. There's there's no reconciliation. Yeah. So was that and, like one of the last times y'all spoke? How did oh, that absolutely. even pan out? Oh my goodness. And this is this is eight months pregnant, about to give birth. Yeah. I, okay. So we don't need to stress. Right. Wow, Zan. Mm-hmm. So. I guess we could only guess, speculate, assume, grab at straws, but do you feel like there was anything going on with like her mental health and anything that could have maybe even been the catalyst for this? Because I noticed you were like, okay, around the time that the fight had happened, she had reconnected with y'all's biological father. And yeah. then she at things were escalating to a very like, it was just incongruent. It was like, how do we go from, I don't want to clean the kitchen to you're slamming my head to the ground to now I'm trying to kill you to I'm charging you $10,000 for a guitar. Like this, this does not make sense. Mm -hmm. It does not. It's in the like mental health space. We basically are like, this is all, it's just incongruent. It doesn't make sense. It's, um, I can't think of words right now because they're flying all around, but basically, right. What do you, do you think you know, or have an idea of maybe what was going on? Yeah. Know, you also asked for a psyche though. Cause you, so clearly you were like, oh, yeah. mental health is mm-hmm. something that we need to address in this whole case. Okay. Yeah. So I'm a veteran, like I, I shared, I was in the military. So mm-hmm. I have seen a therapist through the VA mm-hmm. and, um, have shared a lot of the details that I've shared here. And I don't want to like, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I, I want to say she said some type of like behavioral or per- personality, personality or some type disorder. of disorder or something. Yeah. Something like that. Um, and that it could be a trauma that occurred and we just um, like react or like handle it differently. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. how I'm like, like, I don't know. I don't want to seem like, like the greatest like hero and all this stuff, but it's like forging on, like still trying to like move forward and keep going Mm -hmm. and do things and Mm -hmm. stuff. It's like, this has like taken over her like outlook, you know? Um, But then also in all of this, my mom and myself learned that um, there had been statements that she was hearing or like people were saying that I feel bad. Because I remember them. So Mm -hmm. the aunt that I told you about, her Mm -hmm. husband would make statements. um, What did he say? Two people, one brain, and Zan carries the brain. Because she was like my shadow. She was like my little sister. We were always together. And I was the vocal one. She was the quieter one. Um, mm-hmm. And so, and and then on the other side of that, she was the smart one. So I'm sure for someone to say, Zan carries the brain when Zan has never made honor roll, <laughs> <laughs> like A's, B's, C's, D's, F's, all of them. I got mm-hmm. all of them. Um, mm-hmm. And she was like, A, honor roll. So yeah. I'm sure little statements like that, which I also find ironic that you chose to That's go now live with this person. Yeah. Right. But you chose to go live with this person. Mm -hmm. that has put these things like all of these like doubts and insecurities Mm -hmm. in your head Mm -hmm. and I know that just re-traumatizing I wonder if they were bringing that up still or what their perception was we don't know right and then and then for me it's just like I probably would have gone to like the ends of the earth for her and so it's like you just gave that up for a man that almost let me drown at a pool party with his side chick. Mm. <laughs> like, so I feel like this was, be- uh, this was almost like a, I'm on dad's side. I think that he too. was feeding her things. Like you could do this. If you do this and she does this, then like, like I said, I gave a few examples, but his mom mm-hmm. used to live with us and she would do things. And it's just like, my sister like does not remember them. Right. Wow. 
So how is your mental health throughout all of this? Because I know right now we're talking, you can talk about it, right? You said it's like mm-hmm. 10 years later, we're talking about it. We're seeing the resilience from it. Of course, it's like going to jail, being arrested, period. That's traumatizing. Being sued, that can be traumatizing. Mm-hmm. Being attacked subsequently when you're in college after being attacked. Like all of that can be, I'm not putting it on you, but it can mm-hmm. be traumatizing or very significant life experiences like how and then on top of that, like you said you're a veteran too so it's like okay all these things combined like mm-hmm. how are how was and how is your your mental health and how are you managing all of that I think I think for like majority of the time I think I'm I'm like fine and then I really think about like when people are like oh I have all my friends and I'm like I have two friends Like, I truly do not trust people. I don't trust anyone. Yeah. And it's, I think that's like the biggest thing that it's done for me is like, I don't trust people. Yeah. Like, how can my my best friend, my sister do this? And I don't trust anyone. Yeah. It's hard to be vulnerable again. Mm -hmm. Trust that you can connect with someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you, is that something you feel like you're working on or you want to change? Um, I don't know, honestly, okay. because I, I, I feel like say I grow and I learn to trust again and then something else happens. It's like, did I truly believe that I was trusting them or was I waiting for the other shoe to drop? You know what I mean? Like, right. so, I mean, yeah, no, I don't, take, I don't, it takes time to build that. It takes time to build that belief or to re kind of rewire our belief system when it comes to our connection to other people. Because I I understand to be like, oh, this happened to me with this person when Mm -hmm. I was vulnerable and defensive of them and protective of them and literally couldn't get closer than blood. So how do I know that someone who is just a friend or just like a a stranger Mm -hmm. that I'm now connected with off the street won't do the same thing? Um, And it does, it does create like a barrier you know, so it's understandable that you're like, friend, no, please. Right. I right. thought you were sister and this happened to me. Right, so exactly. Friend is something you have to earn. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing wrong with wanting people to earn that that level of vulnerability with you, mm-hmm. for sure. But, whew. Yeah. I cannot imagine. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, it's yeah, t- like I you don't... said, it's 10 years later. We're talking about it now. And like we mentioned earlier, you know, we had our relation, we could relate the relatability in terms of like siblings and the different experiences in the house of different truths in the house. Mm -hmm. If there are other listeners, viewers right now who are like, yeah, I've had, you know, uh, tits or quarrels with my siblings, or I have estranged from some of my siblings. Like what is something that you would, what that you would say to them? Um, Something you would want them to hold on to after, after hearing your story. I think I'm always telling someone that they need to figure out who and what their priorities are. And so in this situation, I feel like my sister was prioritizing relationships with people that were not prioritizing her. Mm. And although like third parties, I think I could have done a better job of defending her, but I mean, also she could speak up for herself and say something, you know? And so I think I could have better done a better job of defending her when we heard statements like two bodies, one brain and Dan carries the brain. Right. But again, she could also. So um, prioritizing the people that prioritize you. And so if you're finding that a a third party is coming in and causing a rift in a relationship that you find valuable and Mm -hmm. is um, worthwhile to you, yeah. then sit down and determine who's a priority, this yeah. third party or the relationship that I've had for 10, 20 years. Yeah. And, and, and it's not always the 10, 20 year relationship that is the priority, but yeah. determining who and what is the priority, I think is my thing. Cause then you can determine, is this something that I want to sit down and work through? Is this something that I want to apologize for? Is this something that I want to give more of myself to? Cause like, yeah. Like I said, I've I've been willing to have that conversation with her and then the conversations go sideways. Right. And so 
if it's now twice that we've had conversations and the conversations has ended, have ended with you name calling mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, where can I don't, we go? yeah, right. Where can we go? Yeah, man. Well, I agree. I agree. Prioritize who's prioritizing you and really know why you want to be in the relationships you're in. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. I know that it can be a lot to recall mm -hmm. all of that. And I know we can like, we can have the the humor and bring some of that to it as well. But this is definitely a testament of like your resilience and your strength to be able to recall a lot of the events that cause an estrangement, a relationship breakdown between you and someone you called your best friend. So right. I'm really sorry that happened to you. One. Thank um, you. And honest, to be honest, I'm sorry it happened to both of you because I hate that mm -hmm. someone got in between you two. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. Because like you said, I, I, we grew up together in high school mm -hmm. and I remember y'all were thick as thieves. Y'all held it mm -hmm. down for each other. So it's like, man, that sucks that it happened. Mm -hmm. um, and I just hope that you continue to, to let your resilience carry you through and that trust is something that you feel safe giving to others again. Yeah. I'd like to get back to that. Yeah. All right. Well, y'all. Listening to Zan's story, I'm sure a lot of us can either relate or know someone who can relate. Um, but I do want us to switch gears to a space of, um, of gratitude. Gratitude is a great space or a great thing to practice. Um, it's a part of what people see as like post-traumatic growth um, or resilience or shifting our perspective. And on the podcast, we have a segment called The Gift. And GIFT is an acronym. The G stands for gratitude or goal. The I is for intention. The F is for faith or focus. And then the T is for take action. So um, I will go first. My gratitude is actually for having relationships outside of my family that I call like sister friends. I think like you said, it takes a lot to be vulnerable and connect with people. And sometimes your siblings may not be the people that are your best friends. I think I have mm -hmm. kind of like a different story where my siblings were not my best friends. Um, mm -hmm. Other people were like friends that I made like in school or at jobs or whatever. So I'm grateful for that. Um, my intention is kind of along with what you said is to be very clear about who and what or who and why I, I connect to because you can perceive the relationship to be one thing mm -hmm. because it's what you desire or it's what you want. It may be coming from a place of, of trauma. It may be coming from a place of invalidation and you're just trying to get that validation or acceptance. So just being clear on who and why you're connecting to someone. Um, that's my intention to continue to do that. Um, my faith or focus. Hmm. I think my focus would be to continue to cultivate uh healthy relationships, you know? I think like you said, it takes time and it takes vulnerability. And I used to say like, oh, I have all the friends I need, like friendship applications are now closed. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you can always connect with someone. So I yeah. would just call that. And then take action. Take action. <laughs> How do I take action? Um, hmm. I want to be more intentional. So I'm going to call people more often. I think I just kind of like text or just kind of assume people are good based on social media. <laughs> we all sometimes do that. So I want to call and reach out to people more often. That'll be my take action. All right. What say you? Okay. So my gratitude is I have gratitude for the people who are in my life, who I know do truly care about me. Yeah. And will do what it takes to actually show, show that they care about me. Yes. Um, my intention. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's kind of like, what do you want to embody? Or let be your North star. Um, staying positive and like, so like, I know, like I'll have bad days and I want to be intentional about not letting the bad days last too mm -hmm. long yeah. or like the bad hour or minute or yes. however long it takes, like, just let it be that, that time mm -hmm. and then 
keep going. Yeah. Um, and then my focus is, I would say my focus is like building or like continuing to like pull all the pieces together and like to make my life exactly the way I want it to be. And so Mm. I kind of shared a little bit that I'm a single mom by choice, but Mm -hmm. I think that for many, that would be a very difficult choice to make. And so I just want to continue doing things. Like if it's awkward to some people, that's perfectly fine with me, but Mm -hmm. I just want to keep living the life that makes me happy. Unapologetically too. Yes. Yes. Um, And then what's T? Take action. Take take action. action. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, hmm, I don't know. I think that was more difficult for me. What's something you want to do? Hmm. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I was trying to kill a spider as well. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I think I'll take action in like helping. I think I, I really like to help people. So maybe helping okay. others also make those, like help make those decisions. Like you don't have to do what's, what's normal. And I kind okay. of do that, like on my Instagram and my YouTube page, like just showing what a different yes. life might look like for people. So, yeah, I love that. I love that. And I think you are already doing that. Like you said, you have your YouTube, you have your Instagram, your social media, um, and I definitely want people to to follow you on that. So what are your your social media platforms or the way that you are showing people to live unapologetically without trying to be quote unquote normal or fit into normal? Boxes, right. right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so my Instagram is life with Alexandra K, and K mm-hmm. is just one letter. Um, and then my YouTube is the same thing. So I have a YouTube channel where I pretty much just vlog. Um, I'm newly pregnant, so I'll probably be documenting my pregnancy on there um, <laughs> about my life as a single mom by choice. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, and I would love, so we talked about this earlier off um, off record, but I would definitely love for you to come back and talk oh, about yeah. what it is like to be a single mom by choice. As and free as birth. Woman, and free birth. <laughs> if people don't know what free birth is, what is free birth? Really quick. Free birth is an unassisted home birth. So okay. you are having your baby at home with no medical professional. Um, but you are you should be very educated on yes. what that looks like and what's physiologically normal and what's not. Um, okay. So essentially no no midwife. You could have a doula. A doula will hold okay. space for you and like help you get your water and ice chips and stuff uh-huh. <laughs> massages if you need them. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I would love to hear more about that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So all right, you all, I'll definitely put the links in the description, her YouTube and her Instagram go there, not only just to kind of be nosy, but to get educated, <laughs> really yeah. to get educated on some of the things that Zane has shared with us. Um, with regards to being a single mom by choice and free birth. Um, before we go, I have another segment really quick. It's called Vibe Tunes ATM at the moment. And it really is just about music. So this doesn't even have to relate to the topic here, you know, but it's just what has been your vibe lately. What's the song you've been kind of tapping into? What you've been enjoying? Let me see. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm about, to say, I'm about to open up my playlist. I actually just added <laughs> song. This song is so unrelated, y'all, and you're going to laugh. Um, so while Zane is oh, finding gosh. hers, I'm going to share mine. <laughs> <laughs> so mine is actually, it's it's been going crazy on TikTok and Instagram. Oh, God. It is by um, someone named That Chick Angel. Oh, God. <laughs> and she actually put it on, <laughs> she put it on Apple Music. It's called One Margarita. It's the margarita song. And I feel like it is a summer anthem. <laughs> oh, wait, I think I've heard this song. I think I've heard this song. It is so funny. It is not safe for work. <clears throat> and it's probably not for kids either. But it is mm-hmm. on Apple Music. It's on my playlist. And I'll put the link in the bio. It is hilarious. I love, I just love Black women being unapologetic, one. But it is about to be a hot girl summer. Uh, but also a healing girl summer, like y'all see my shirt. So I could be hot and healing. So if I want margaritas, I'm going to have margaritas. If I need to go to therapy, I'm going to do that too. Um, right? So that's my song, One Margarita by That Chick Angel. I think I'll say Plan B by Meg Thee Stallion. Okay. Why? <laughs> I don't Listen, know. I think I'm like a... I love that song. It's giving a little Kim vibes. I'm like, yes. right. I'm like a girl's girl, feminist, uh-huh. like do uh-huh. what you want to do. Yes. So I think that's like... 
the vibe I'd like to leave with people. (laughs) We're leaving y'all with a very hot girl vibe, okay? (laughs) Very feminist, womanist vibe. Have your margaritas. Take your plan Bs. Okay. Um, If it is a hot girl summer or not, I mean, do what you want to do. Do Do whatever you want to do. do. (laughs) It's your choice. Exactly. I love Thank you so much, Zed, again, for for being so vulnerable, for being brave and courageous and sharing. I say this all the time. Your story can really inspire and encourage others. And we will never know until we decide to take that. that. So thank you all listeners and viewers as well for listening to Here We Are, the Mindful Podcast. Let's connect on Instagram at the Here We Are Pod. Facebook at Here We Are Podcast with Tika, as well as on YouTube at Here We Are Pod. And remember, if you're loving the podcast, I'd be so honored if you go ahead and hit that subscribe button, rate, and leave me a review, especially on Apple Podcasts, because what that does is it helps it get into in front of the people who need it the most. If you want to share your story, maybe you have some words of encouragement for Zan, or you just want to give me some feedback, feel free to email the Here We Are Pod at gmail.com. And remember, again, your story can inspire and encourage others. Remember to breathe in this present moment. Our past can definitely inform, but it doesn't have to control. Take care.